This is a Star Wars movie review after all, so you know what that means. Aha, there we go. Oh my god. You know, here in Minnesota, we don't really get advanced screening for these huge blockbuster movies. So, my review is a little late compared to some of the other YouTubers. So, I apologize in advance if this sounds similar or redundant. But, sometimes, great minds think alike, you know? So, Star Wars, The Rise of Skywalker, is a movie that, um, the movie that got me thinking. A lot, you know. I, I could have filmed my review uh, last night. I got home pretty early, around 6, 7. Um, so I, I, I could have filmed something, you know. I could have filmed my review then. But I I didn't. I didn't want to. Because there were so many things that I wanted to sleep on. There were so many things that I was so mixed on. I didn't know how to feel. So I, I, I want to I give those thoughts more time to sort of develop. And I'm gonna say it, I don't think this movie is as bad as people are making it out to be. I don't think it's the worst Star Wars movie ever made, but it might be one of the most disappointing ones. Now, there are definitely things that you could, you know, enjoy as a Star Wars fan, you know, with J.J. Abram behind the camera, it is almost impossible for this movie to look bad. You know, visually, the movie is stunning. There's not much wrong with the technical stuff. Like, everything just, just look and sound phenomenal. There is a battle, and this is not a spoiler because you saw it in the trailer, a battle between uh, Rilo, Rilo, uh, I mean Rey and Kylo Ren on top of a uh, wreckage uh, in the middle of, 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 of a uh, the ocean. In my opinion, my it has one of the best cinematography that we've seen in you know the movie theater all year. One of the best, if not the best cinematography I've seen all year. I think the visual effects, you know, from the CGI to the practical effects, all look fantastic, all right? Uh, the sound effects, sound design for the, the, the weapons, the, the vehicles, just ah, so good. And the music, my God. Say what you will about these movies, you know? Say what you will about these movies. John Williams score is like, might be one of the might be the most consistent thing in the entire saga. This man, oh my God, he's a legend. You know, like this score is. Uh. And as far as performances go, like not none of the actors disappointed. Like they all brought their A game. You know, uh, from from da Daisy Ridley to uh, John Boyega to uh, Adam Driver, they, they they all did a fantastic job with these roles. But what, what it came down to me, like what, you know, ultimately disappointed me the most is the writings. The writings disappointed me on so many levels. Now, you know, I'm, I'm about to say what, you know, Chris Stuckman and Jeremy John already said in their reviews. So if you've already seen their, their videos, I apologize again. But after finishing this movie, it, it became so clear. It became crystal clear to me that Disney and Kathleen Kennedy, they did not have a plan. They don't, like, when they made The Force Awakened, they don't know where that was going to lead. They, they don't have an end game, okay? And, you know, if, if anybody, I'm telling you right now, if anybody from Disney, J.J. Abram, you know, if anybody who worked on the movie came up to me and said, you know, you know, we planted this out, you know, from the beginning. Like, this is, you know, it was meant to be, you know, like, we wanted this to happen. Like, we had everything planted out from the beginning. If they said that to me, man, listen, I, I'm, I might get arrested for a assault. I might have to throw some hands because, you know, one of the many things that I hate in this world is a liar. I hate liars, and especially those who make more money than me. So because they don't have a plan when they made The Force Awaken, it was a really good movie. Okay? I, I love The Force Awaken, okay? And then they went on to make The Last Jedi. This is a completely different uh, writers and director, okay? And that's kind of messed up what J.J. Abram had in mind. So now with this movie, with uh, The Rise of Skywalker, not only does he have to, you know, put out the fire, you know, damage control, but he also have to tell his own story. So that's where the, the, the conflict comes in. You know, like, see, he, 
he was just, JJ, he, he was, you know, just juggling so many things. He was, you know, on one hand, putting out the fire from The Last Jedi. You know, like, there's so many things in that movie that he wanted to fix. But at the same time, he wanted to tell his own story. So, they, like, like the pacing of the, this movie, like, it's so weird, like, seeing the Star Wars movie pace like this. Like, you would have, like, you know, scenes dedicated to, you know, fixing uh, the problems from The Last Jedi. Then you would have scenes that would, you know, uh, progress the story forward, and then you would have another scene to put out the fire. It's just, it's, oh my god, it's so, f like, it's kind of funny, to be honest. Speaking of the pacing, my god, like, th I, I think this is the, the, the longest Star Wars movie ever made, right? It, like, if, if, if I'm correct, I, 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 th I think this is the longest, you know, Star Wars movie ever, with, uh, was it two hours, three minutes, two hours, 32 minutes, right? Um, it did not feel like that at all. Like, I mean, t to a certain degree, I want to give, you know, the, the editors of the movie some credit because it moves at a breakneck pace. Like, at, at certain points, I could not keep up with it, you know? Watching the movie is like hanging out with my nephews, in a way, because... <laughs> it's such a weird sentence to say. Watching a Star Wars movie is like hanging out with my nephews, because... There were so many points when I was like, like, yo, 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 my man, slow down, like, take your time, it's like, you know, like, you don't, don't go crazy, all right, just take your time, slow down, give, give yourself, give us, the audience, times to breathe, times to take, you know, those informations in and, you know, pro uh, process them, right, you, you don't have to, get to go that fast. Let's go back to the writings, I'm not done with the writings yet, there's so many one-liners, at some point, I, I, I felt like I was watching Fast and Furious because characters just start dropping one-liners from left to right. I was like, what is this writing right now? So that's one. Number two, exposition. Some of the most important, some of the most crucial moments in this movie is, you know, it's just a, a character dumping information down. You know, just just a character saying it. Dialogues in the movie, it's most of the time, it's not even real dialogues. It's just, you know, characters dumping, you know, just spoon-feeding us information. That's very disappointing. Now, there is one word that I've been hearing a lot when people are discussing the, the sequel trilo uh, trilogies. And that word is Mary Sue. Now, do I think uh, Ray is a little OP? Yes. But... I honestly I, w I wouldn't call that Mary Sue because two reasons. Number one is is from the movie, you know. This movie t takes place a year after Last Jedi, so she has a year to uh, train to practice to uh, you know develop her skills as a Jedi. And number two, you know where I came from being naturally good at something is not necessarily Mary Sue, you know, like, I, I'm, I believe that, you know, people are born with a skill, like, you are born with a, you, with something that you're just naturally good at, when you find out who Ray really is in the movie, she's, by the way, she's not a nobody, she is definitely a somebody, um, when you find out who, who she is, it actually makes sense, it makes sense why she is so strong with the Force and why she is, you know, could be considered a Mary Sue, but, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of in her blood. Like, she is supposed to be that good because of who she is. So, like, I, I can kind of see why people would get mad, you know, and call Rey a Mary Sue, but it's not for me, no. As far as character arc goes... My favorite, my personal favorite right now is probably Kylo Ren. I think he has the most consistent and the most sort of developed characters out of all the, you know, the, I guess, four main characters in the, the trilogies. Um, he's the most interesting. And I feel like he is the one character that J.J. and Ryan Johnson kind of have an agreement on, um, which is why his, uh, his story and his arc felt the most complete and felt the most cohesive. Um, for Ray, though, like I think she has a really cool, uh, a really cool uh, setup in Force Awakens. Um, interesting, you know, an interesting uh, takes in Last Jedi, but now with this movie, 
again, just JJ going, like, Ryan Johnson, what are you doing, man? Like, now I gotta fix this, so... Like, I, listen, I love Daisy Ridley as Ray. I think she's fantastic. And he, she gave a, a really great performance here. It's just the, the character is very inconsistent throughout the three movies. As for um, Finn and uh, Poe, they're like the NPC in the video games. They're not a very good one. They're just kind of there to, I don't like Finn, like Finn, Finn might be one, one of the more disappointing ones because... He, he started out as a storm tro uh, stormtrooper, right? A stormtrooper turn good is such a cool um, setup for a character. In Last Jedi, for some reason, Ryan Johnson didn't, didn't really do anything interesting with it. They like, just kind of pair him up with Rose, who is, in my opinion, is a pretty bad character, like a pretty awful character, and just send the two of them to some casino and ride some horses and gosh and now in this movie he was just kind of there like he didn't really do much until the very end like he was he, he yells a lot for some reason like Ray! like <laughs> every five minutes finn would just pop up Ray! i was like dude like what come on man like, like i mean john boyega is such a cool dude and you know to see what they did with his character is kind of disappointing. You know, having only seen the movie once, I don't feel that comfortable, you know, giving it a, a score. But I will, uh, I'm, I'm going to do it anyway. But I'm, I'm just going to tell you guys right now, it might change in the future. Um, because th there's some things that I do enjoy about the movie. I, again, the, all the technical stuff are near perfect. Uh, the performances are good, despite some of the more disappointing writings and, you know, characters and whatnot. Um, the, pa the pacing is weird. It is way too fast. But then again, it's kind of the lesser evil uh, of the two evil. Like, I would, I would rather have a fast-paced movie than a slow-paced movie. It would be nice to have something right in the middle, but... If it's just come down to the two of them, I would take a fast-paced movie any day, you know? The the inconsistency and the lack of planning is very obvious. And, you know, I, I can see why many Star Wars fans are so pissed at this movie. Me, personally, I could, you know, sit back and appreciate and respect the filmmaking behind it and some of the storytelling effort that, that, that went into it. But in the end, it's, it is really disappointing. The movie is really disappointing. So with that being said, after just one viewing of the movie, and do keep in mind that this might change in the future, but for just for now, I'm going to give Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker a 6 out of 10. Let's see, I gave uh, Force Awakens a 10 out of 10 um, after my first viewing. I rewatched that movie like 4 or 5 times, and I love it even more after every uh, subsequent views. And still a 10 out of 10 in my book. Uh, 9 out of 10 for Last Jedi after my first viewing, rewatched that movie twice, and after my second my second rewatch, I realized how much I hate the uh, can Canto Bite uh, sequence, it's so dumb. 9 got down to an 8, still really enjoy the movie, didn't love it as much uh, first time around. This movie, after my first viewing, 6 out of 10, might get higher, might get lower. I can't really promise a spoiler review but you know i do want to make one if i could get a couple of friends to come over and you know if if we if we have something you know new or something unique to say about the movies we might do a, a spoiler review but i'm i'm not going to promise it all right if you got a chance to watch uh star wars the rise of skywalker let me know in the comment section how you feel about it do you like it do you not like it and if you enjoy my review hit the like button and subscribe if you want to see more reviews like this with that being said I'll see you soon